Updates on Boyajian Star, KIC 846-2852. The secret persists extraterrestrial megastructures have long attracted the attention of both professional and amateur astronomers. One such powerful pull was Tabby's star. There has been a rush of curiosity following the bizarre episode with the light dimming. For quite some time, Tabby Star, also known as Star KIC 846-2852, has piqued the interest of and been the subject of research in the scientific world. Scientists are trying to understand why it undergoes erratic bouts of brightening and fading. Unexpected evidence has been found that could help solve the mystery of this curiously declining star. Hence, unwind as we discuss the enigmatic circumstances surrounding the star KIC 846 2852, often known as Tabby Star. When it comes to researching exoplanets and other distant worlds, NASA's Kepler spacecraft has radically changed the rules of the game. Up until now, it has tracked almost 530,000 stars. Over 2,600 exoplanets remain unexplored. One of these tens of thousands of stars stands out as being especially peculiar. KIC 846-2852, also referred to as Tabby Star or Boyajian Star, has some of the most peculiar characteristics in the universe. Almost 25% of its flux is lost, which is 25 times more than what an exoplanet revolving around its star might do. Moreover, it ages gradually over decades, occasionally brightening unusually, and emits no infrared light, which all the other stars with large flux dips possess. These discoveries baffled scientists, who then set out to solve the puzzle. In our earlier film on the Tabby star, we discussed a variety of possibilities, including the possibility of an alien megastructure. But now, things have changed yet again. Last month, the star's behavior changed a little bit, and it seems to have gone into a permanent 1% dimming stage. This deviates from the star's usual behavior, which is to exhibit brief but frequently fairly dramatic dips. For instance, dips in the Kepler data were as high as 22% but lasted only a few days or so. Instead, for the past month or so, there has been a steady dip of plus or minus 1%. It also exhibits incredibly quick periods of recovery, almost the exact opposite of what it often does. The shallowness of this 1% fading is another characteristic. The dips in the star's brightness have tended to be smaller and weaker dimming episodes since the Kepler mission. As suggested by Dr. Boyajian in the early stages of this event, a collisional scenario, such as colliding icy comets, could explain this. The problem is that this would take an absurdly enormous number of comets, or essentially a large comet that would be more like a planet exploding. But none of these models have, to date, correctly predicted the observations made with this star. One observer found that the material obscuring the star during this dimming briefly became optically thick, virtually floating in and out of optical thickness. This is another noteworthy development with the current dimming. This was discovered by examining several light wavelengths, and if accurate, it would imply that the dust cloud changed significantly in thickness and density as it moved in front of the star, yet remained dense enough to keep the star visually dull. A big solid object covering a star, such as a massive extraterrestrial megastructure, may be indicated by optical thickness, however in this case it appears that the dust just grew thick for a brief period of time, confounding current theories. Even though it's implausible, we should save the possibility of an alien origin idea for last. The point is that, even for dust events, this star is acting strangely. How the dust is still present in the system is one very puzzling aspect of this star. The star shows a propensity for long-term dimming, which is probably connected to the short-term dimming episodes. How likely is it that the same star will have two separate but unusual occurrences without them being connected, especially when both involve dimming? Investigations comparing various light wavelengths absorbed during dips, however, have shown that this dust is actually fairly meager. This submicron particulate needs to be regularly blasted out of the system. 
This defies collisional theories since whatever is occurring seems to be replenishing the dust quicker than it is being blown away. Yet, the recent shallowing of the dips relative to when Kepler first noticed them seems to support a collisional scenario in which objects are dispersing. The fact that the decline seems to match astronomers' predictions of periodicity is another intriguing discovery. To understand what's happening with this star, periodicity must be established. Proving periodicity would provide answers to a number of open questions, including whether or whether this phenomenon is caused by interstellar dust and is just visible from our perspective, or whether it is actually in orbit around this star. Interstellar dust is unlikely since, from our vantage point, we should see it affecting nearby stars like KIC 8462852. When a cloud covers a star at night, it doesn't simply block out one star, it also blocks out all nearby stars. The same holds true for galaxies. This is not detected, and whatever is happening only affects this solitary star system that resembles a point, suggesting that the dust surrounding it is revolving around it. It appears that the debris obscuring Tabby's star is orbiting it in the star's habitable zone, making this orbit crucial. This seems to be supported by more and more evidence. But here's the catch. At the dust's observed size, which is a tiny smoke-like particle, it should be warming infrared and blowing out of the system at the same time. Given the star's long-term fading tendency of at least a century, some of this dust must be hanging around and should be blazing with warmth, yet no infrared emissions from it have been seen. It seems not, however regularity will help clear this out and perhaps provide insight into whether the dust is actually cold. Some sort of collisional scenario in which cascades of material smash and generate dust clouds is the best natural explanation for the star's activity. Yet it's challenging to think of a device that could do it continuously across time. As you recall, in addition to Kepler's observations and those that followed, strong evidence for dips in this star's brightness has been found in earlier sky surveys spanning from the 1930s to the 1970s. Everything that is happening is a long-term, ongoing process. It is still unknown what that operation entails. And with the recent discoveries, it becomes much more enigmatic. In a recent study, Edward Schmidt describes searches he's conducted through previous sky surveys to try to find candidates performing similarly to KIC 8462852. Schmidt had little trouble locating candidates. Being able to view and follow those candidates is fantastic news for Tabby Star. If they are driven by the same phenomenon, researchers will have access to far more information on potential candidates and will have a much greater understanding of what is happening with these stars. In reality, he found that Tabby's star might be a member of a small cluster of 15 stars or so that display the same perplexing brightness changes. The light curves of these stars, known as slow dippers, are quite similar to Boyajian star, yet there's something peculiar about them. Although more information and candidates are needed to move further, two clear patterns have emerged in this data that don't seem to be the result of chance. The candidate stars seem to cluster together, which is the first observation. They appear to be gathering in the area around KIC 846-2852 in greater numbers. This does not fit with a randomly distributed star pattern. And that's when things start to seem odd. Because this is what you would anticipate from an alien culture that is expanding. You could ponder, in the same region of the Milky Way, 15 stars are closely packed and seem to be flickering in an unusual way. Is this an advanced civilization's technological signature? The grouping is still remarkable, though. The obvious issue that arises is, is the cause for the grouping superficial and that some interfering dust in the interstellar medium is what is responsible for the phenomenon. This is untrue because, once more, you would notice nearby stars disappearing and feel the impact, which is invisible. Whatever it is, it is occurring right now in the vicinity of these stars, and if it is absolutely genuine, as it seems to be, there is no logical explanation for the apparent cluster. Then, though, comes oddity number two. On the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, the candidate stars cluster not just in space, but also according to their type. 
All of the stars are either type F, like tabbies, or type G, like the sun, which is pretty peculiar. For massive or tiny stars, this does not seem to be the case. This appears to make no sense at all. It stands to reason that it would occur with orange dwarfs, red dwarfs, and various types of stars. Although it's just a wild guess, it's plausible that those types of stars are more effective at destroying material of this kind than type F and G stars. But, it is important to note that type G stars are obviously incredibly fantastic for life because we live next to one, whereas type F stars are a little bit shorter lived but rather stable, and while they may not be ideal for life to form around, they may be just great for aliens to dwell and use. However, it goes without saying that this evolution is a little odd because stars are gathering simultaneously in space and according to their classification. As a result, the report suggests that SETI may want to look into these new possibilities further. Also, they should be looked into broadly to try and determine whether this puzzling event, which appears to happen to some stars selectively, is natural or artificial. You discover that you don't have a firm grasp on what is happening just as you begin to believe you do. Since 2015, this has been the situation for this famous person, and I have no doubt that more shocks are still to come. What do you think about the Tabby Star's ongoing odd behavior? What hypothesis could be able to explain these occurrences? Comment below with your thoughts and let us know what you think. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, as doing so motivates us to continue producing excellent material for you.